So in this example, uh, we've just finished installing WinSCP, and we copied a gzipped file from WinSCP to our local machine, but now we're not sure exactly how to extract it. So I'm going to use uh, the trusty site license to allow me to download some files that are, or so a program that's going to allow me to extract gzipped files. So let's go back to the students bit here. Uh, security, database, graphics, statistics, math and science. Somewhere in here, hopefully, there is a tool that's going to allow me to extract gzipped files and uh, decompress them. But I actually don't see anything here. So let's check back on the ECE 275 website to see what's listed under resources, to see if I can find a tool there. So under the Resources tab, now I see a couple of things here. General Resources, SSH Clients. Here's 7-Zip, a program to extract compressed files on Windows. So we're going to visit this, and now we see that I have 7-Zip available as a download here. Uh, this seems like a pretty stable release since it was released in 2010. So I'm going to download the installer MSI file. You'll probably be okay with the .exe file, but since I have 64-bit Windows installed, I went ahead and downloaded the 64-bit version. So we're going to go ahead and run the installer. And my operating system very kindly offers to check to see if the installer is going to provide any bad behaviors. And again, eh, you should probably read through those terms. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with them, so I'll go ahead and install it. It's not always the case, but many times when you see that um, software is freely available, as is in the case with uh, 7-Zip, you can check the license to see why it's freely available. Sometimes it's because it was designed and built using freely available tools that require anything built with those tools to also be freely available. I'm not sure if that's the case for 7-Zip uh, or not. We could look at the frequently asked questions and see while it goes through the installation process here. This is not something you have to do, obviously. It's always nice to see setup that's not responding. Uh, so let's see. Can I use it? Yep, 7-Zip is free software. Uh, why can't it open some zip archives? So it looks like it doesn't actually have a lot of information about the licensing here. Uh, yep, 7-Zip is licensed under the GNU Lesser GPL license. So if you use 7-Zip uh, for some reason, then you also have to obey the license agreement that's found in the Lesser Good New Public License. So if you'd like to know more about that, you can Google uh, and check out what LGPL says. Somewhere, someone's complaining that I haven't clicked on something, I think. Oh, do you want to allow this to happen? Yes. Why else would I run the installer if I didn't want it to install? So thankfully, once this is complete, I should be able to extract the zip file that I just downloaded. We'll see. So there's WinSCP. Now what happens if I double click on this TGZ file? Look for another app. Let's see if we can find 7-Zip on here. 7-Zip. Let's see if this does it. Right click, 7-Zip, extract files. So I'm going to extract them to the assignment 0 directory inside of ECE 275. So that was a little strange. I didn't expect that if I double clicked on this file type that nothing would happen. So instead I right clicked and then 7-Zip had an option here. So now inside of assignment 0 I see that I have this tar file. So I'm going to use 7-Zip to 
extract this here. And so now I have yet another file, sprinkle jm, spring jm assignment zero, but in this file now I have the CMake list and the readme text, etc. So it created this extra file information here. I'm not sure exactly why it did that. Uh, it might be that if I went all the way back to ECE 275, I might be able to extract and unzip in the same place. I might be able to just decompress. Yeah, so this time it extracted the tar to the same directory, and now I'm going to delete this directory here. So now I can extract the tar file to this location. And so now Spring JM assignment zero is here. And I have a source that has a CMake list, a main, and a print usage, and these other files that I created in some of the other demos. So now I'm ready to try to use CMake here on my Windows machine uh, to check and make sure that all these files still compile.